The gaming industry is full of different people that help drive the world of video games. And those people are actually human. And humans make mistakes. Sometimes those errors leave a lasting impression that would make anybody shake their head. So here's my list of five mistakes made in the video game industry. Let's get started. Number one, Retron 5's emulator infringement. The day everyone heard Hyperkin was doing it again with the Retron 5, many wondered what it would be like. A gaming console capable of playing Famicom, NES, Super Famicom, SNES, Genesis, Game Boy, and Game Boy Advance games, it made you wonder, how was it possible? Only way Hyperkin knew to make it possible was to use emulation. Amidst some of the bugs that the emulator setup came with, the odd way you had to update the firmware, and even the multitude of reports of faulty units and poor customer service, there was one issue that put the company in hot water. It was discovered that Hyperkin had used emulators by other authors without their permission, thus profiting off of the author's hard work and them not receiving any of the benefit. Unfortunately, it appears that Hyperkin has chosen to be silent on this matter. It's been a couple years since we've heard anything about this, so it's safe to say we may never hear a word from them. Number two, Nintendo losing Rare to Microsoft. Okay, so you're one of the largest video game companies on the face of the earth. You've taken down your competitors with crippling aggression and barely anybody wants to oppose you. So what do you do next? How about lose one of your biggest and best game developers to your competitors? Nintendo and Rare had an almost unstoppable relationship with Nintendo owning majority of Rare's stock and having all their genius to themselves. Rare created such titles as Donkey Kong Country, Banjo-Kazooie, and Conker's Bad Fur Day specifically for Nintendo. Unfortunately, Nintendo didn't renew their stock, and their competitors, Microsoft, jumped at the opportunity to own arguably one of the best developers in the industry. Then again, Microsoft hasn't really had much luck with them. Number 3. Microsoft's response to the Xbox One criticism. Okay, 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 okay. Before any Xbox fans decide to break into my house and viciously slaughter me, let me make this clear. I used to love the Xbox, especially the Xbox 360. I stood next to Microsoft's decisions all the way up until the unveiling of the Xbox One and the original concept of the always online and 24 hour online check-in. In 2013, Microsoft announced the successor to one of the best video game systems ever developed, the Xbox One. Almost instantly, excitement turned to uproar as the announcement of the Xbox One would require to be online at all times and would have to do a 24 hour check-in, meaning that there was no offline capability. But it wasn't this poor concept that put it on my list. No, it was Microsoft's response to the criticism that they were receiving from their fan base. To be more specific, Don Matrick, the president of Microsoft's Interactive Entertainment Division's response. Fortunately, we have a product for people who aren't able to get some form of connectivity. It's called Xbox 360. Right. So stick with 360. That's your message. If you don't, well, if you don't like it, if, if you have zero access yeah. to the internet, that is an offline <laughs> device. Xbox 360. Xbox 360. Xbox 360. This response to game trailers Jeff Kingley's question was probably one of the worst ever to spill out of his mouth. Of course, he ended up leaving the project and landing himself a nice, comfortable job as CEO of the mobile game developer Zygnia then eventually resigning in 2015 from that position. This lapse in judgment caused not only myself, but many other Xbox fans to jump ship and go to Sony. Number four, Konami versus Kojima. So I'm not gonna jump on the fuck Konami bandwagon, nor am I gonna condone their actions either. In fact, I really don't care about what drove a wedge between developer and publisher Konami and their star creator, Hideo Kojima but I do have a problem with Konami's treatment of their former employee after he had left their team. On October 9th, 2015, Hideo Kojima, who had been an employee of Konami since 1986, called it quits with his employer of nearly 30 years. Amidst his departure, production on the Silent Hills was halted, and his final game with Konami, Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain, would see release without him. But it didn't stop there. Konami made it a point to make sure to wipe Kojima's name from existence. Bitterly, they made sure that not only MGS TPP, but also Ground Zeroes had no connection to Kojima whatsoever, going as far as erasing Kojima's name from anything promotional of the Metal Gear franchise. But the bitterness didn't end there. They also barred Kojima from accepting any awards for the Phantom Pain during the 2015 Game Awards. These actions won the hate and disgust from many in the gaming community. 
and the resulting backlash resulted in the collective fuck Konami movement. At least they're making a killing with pachinko machines. Number 5. The Nintendo PlayStation. Come on Nintendo, I love you! I really do, but you shouldn't have popped up on my list twice! But, you did. So since the news of the prototype console surfacing came out, the story of how the beloved PlayStation was supposed to be a Nintendo product became common knowledge. Nintendo and Sony started a healthy relationship and began work on a CD add-on for the Super Nintendo. But, the two companies began to have a conflict over licensing control, leading to Sony eventually packing up their stuff and walking away with the design. They eventually created a Super Nintendo compatible console named the PlayStation. Sadly, Nintendo and Sony couldn't sort out their differences, and eventually Sony left the project and started their own video game division. This led to Nintendo's newest rival, the Sony PlayStation. Not a good business move when you practically jumpstart the creation of your own competitors. I guess maybe being in the gaming industry isn't as easy as I thought. But it's like any other industry. It's a money-making cutthroat world, and sometimes the big guys do fall flat on their face. If you can think of any other blunders, give me a comment down below. And I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, give me a like and subscribe. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.